waiting for this one. Millions of years ago, a meteorite made of vibranium. Exposition about a meteorite. Meteor's position? Expositionite? Well, without this, you'd be bitching about the movie not explaining where vibranium came from, and would attempt to send the movie for it. This is just a case of damned if you do. Also, T'Challa-ration. Actually, that's T'Chaka's brother, Njobu. A meteorite made of vibranium struck the continent of Africa, affecting the plant life around it. Yeah, but just the plant life of Africa? I was referring to the plant life around the meteorite, not the entirety of Africa. I mean, wouldn't a meteorite big enough to affect an entire f***ing continent change a lot of things over the world? Also, this meteorite technically did change things all over the world. Ever heard of this guy? Until a warrior shaman received a vision from the panther goddess Bast. Who with a what now? The panther god Bast, the character responsible for the creation of the original Black Panther, also based on the real-life Egyptian goddess Bastet. You know, because Africa? To keep vibranium safe, the Wakandans vowed to hide in plain sight. You know, Wakanda has the same problem as Wonder Woman's Themyscira. You're telling me that before Claw did his heist, not one asshole stumbled upon Wakanda by accident in all those years? Yeah, it's surrounded by mountains and what looks like a rainforest, but there are still flying things like airplanes, right? First of all, not only is Wakanda, like, uber-technologically advanced, they are a nation of warriors led by a superhuman. Anyone not named Claw isn't making it out of here alive. Second, are you under the assumption that planes fly low enough to plow through the forest? The f These two grace... Jones looking chicks. Funny joke, but Suri is soon revealed as being in on the whole undercover operation. So why would he continue the subterfuge, even after Njobu knows he's caught? A complete misunderstanding of the scene. Zuri is undercover and doesn't want to blow his cover unless absolutely necessary. Njobu isn't even aware that T'Chaka knows about his betrayal yet, so... What the hell are you talking about? Who are you talking to? Did you think that you were the only spy we sent here? To Oakland? Yeah, totally. To the United States? No. I'm not that stupid. You're not? T'Chaka was clearly talking about Oakland, so you could have fooled me. The tiny nation of Wakanda is mourning the death of its monarch. I know we need the exposition for the people that didn't see Captain America Civil War, but T'Challa's seriously using his incredible technology to watch f***ing BBC news. I'm almost tempted to remove a sin here for you finally admitting the need for exposition, but do you really think there are people watching this film that haven't seen Civil War? <laughs> This opening action sequence is just way too f***ing dark. I can't even call the movie out for bad staging or choppy editing because I literally can't see anything. That was literally the point. The muzzle flashes illuminating Black Panther are meant to give the feeling of dread that the traffickers felt upon being ambushed. My little sister came to see me off before I'll be dead. Do siblings immediately identify each other as siblings anywhere else other than movies? Knowing you and the way you need your handheld when you watch movies, you probably would have assumed Shuri was just some random scientist working for the throne. Just because something works doesn't mean that it cannot be improved. My dick in a nutshell. Jeremy says boner. Dude, I don't care if it's his precociously brilliant sister or not. Shuri just flipped off the current prince and future king of this country in front of all these people with no repercussions. Do you not realize that Shuri is a princess and that she technically at this moment has the same rank as T'Challa? Also, you literally skipped the part Ramonda admonished Shuri for doing exactly this. I can't wait to see what kind of update you make to your ceremonial outfits. Shuri! Sorry, mother. Where is this one from? Present day Ghana. For real? And what about this one? This eventual reveal is predicated on the fact that this museum refuses to use any descriptive cards for their priceless artifacts. You think people Michael B. Jordan's age or younger actually read? <laughs> Why do you think I took subtitles off? Okay, so the water is being drained ahead of the falls, and all these people are arriving by boat above the falls. So, is there a staircase in these rock faces? Do they all rappel down? It would be definitely yada yada how everyone actually gets to the very specific and temporary location for the crowning slash fight. Not that anyone but you cares about that, but you see later that the Jabari tribe entered this passage through a cavern in the mountain. So, that's how. Probably. T'Challa, the Black 
Panther. I'm super confused about one thing. How the throne of Wakanda and the title of Black Panther are seemingly linked and yet definitely not linked. Because he's been Black Panther for a bit even before his dad died. And now he has to have his Panther purple drank powers medically removed in order to fight for the honor of being king. Upon which they will re-purple drank his ass and get his superpowers back. But he wasn't king before now and still had powers and was out there fighting. He was Black Panthering right after his dad died in Civil War. Did his dad decide to stay king but give up the Panther juice to his son? God damn it, I've written seven lines in a Word document about this and I'm still angry about it, but also now questioning my sanity and whether or not I'm the only one asking these questions. You saw how old T'Chaka was in Civil War, so T'Challa was already on his way to becoming king and had been given the heart-shaped herb in preparation for that. The challenge is a way for other tribes to become royalty if they disagree with the current lineage. <laughs> Did no one notice that the Jabari tribe was missing from this entire ceremony before now? I mean, it makes for a dramatic entrance, but they're definitely a part of Wakanda, and this is a pretty important day. It's almost as if you didn't pay attention to the opening narration. Four tribes agreed to live under the king's rule, but the Jabari tribe isolated themselves in the mountains. As your technological advancements have been overseen by a child <laughs> who scoffs at tradition. Okay, a few things. Technological advancements should be overseen by whoever makes them go smoothly and rapidly, which she is doing. Man Ape's point here is that she scoffs at tradition because she's a child, which is something the world is currently experiencing with millennials and Generation Z. Second, she's 17 going on 18, and almost no decent English-speaking person would call her a child. Those are the words of a pedophile. Mmm, Jeremy sounds like my kind of guy. Third, you've been up in the mountains, dude. You don't get to come down after, I'm guessing, decades and start demanding sh You chose to leave and live in seclusion. So you did pay attention to the opening narration? Jeremy Fane's ignorance cliche. Glory to Hanuman. Wait, who? Hanuman feels like a sudden new name we are giving glory prayers to. Hanuman, or Gekri, is the gorilla god that Man-Ape and the Jabari tribe worship instead of Bast. Traditionally, Hanuman is also a Hindu ape god. Where is your god now? The f M'Baku had some great trash talk before the fight, but what the hell does this have to do with anything? A lot. The Jabari worship Hanuman because he gave them the sacred wood to build their cities, which is why they chose not to worship Bast, split off from the other Wakandans, and is the context for this fight. Don't make me kill you! No, I would rather die! What the hell is T'Challa's plan here? If M'Baku doesn't yield, his ass is definitely going over the falls too. T'Challa's plan is to break his neck. Even though he was just gored with a super heavy spear, T'Challa's chest wound isn't bleeding at all, because we don't want to obscure those beautiful abs, right? <laughs> what abs? Just officially elected king, T'Challa has to undergo the Purple Heart Flower Ceremony in order to receive the Black Panther powers that he had prior to this, but apparently had to give up after his dad died until he was officially elected king or some <laughs> point is they half-assed this from the get-go. They removed the Panther's powers so that it would be a fair fight should any of the tribes challenge the throne. Damn, this is a f***ing MCU movie, right? So why are the effects often so lacking? They couldn't afford those wet assholes that did the Jungle Book? You kidding? Marvel movies are known for having poor CGI. The entire suit sits within the teeth of the necklace. Man, I love this Q-style tech introduction of the gadgets as much as anyone. But the use of vibranium totally bypasses explanation of how all this shit was developed. Like, it's basically, this is the greatest tech ever invented. Yeah, but vibranium forever! The most technologically advanced nation on Marvel Earth, and you ask how they make the tech that they do. When presented with vibranium as the answer, you look around drooling and confused and just hit the ding button. Cinema sins, ladies and gentlemen. What I'm doing or not doing on behalf of the U.S. government is none of your concern. I like Martin Freeman a lot. I even have a John Watson and a Bilbo Baggins poster up in my bedroom. But could they really not get an actual American actor to play the one American that's prominently featured in this movie? It's called acting, Jeremy. Or did you really think Chadwick Boseman is from an African nation? Didn't I keep it under wraps that the king of a third world country runs around in a bulletproof cat suit? Despite speaking in somewhat hushed tones, this super sensitive conversation is easily hearable by anyone nearby. This is Korea. Nobody cares about what they're talking about in a foreign language when there's alcohol and pretty girls around. You got a mixtape coming out? Actually, there is one. Yeah, I'll send you the SoundCloud link if you like. Don't forget to catch me on my Insta too and check f your joke. Claus was way better. Yes, sir. Right. How the hell does useless henchman number four know who Okoye is? Even if they're getting set up, it's not like they'd know exactly who'd be with T'Challa. Okoye is a black African woman wearing a bright red dress and a hair hat in Busan, Korea. I'm not even sure how T'Challa thought this plan would work. Keep going! Look, I know it's a preposterous superhero movie, but seriously, this works. Superhuman strength. Wow, I must have missed the part where this Black Panther movie officially turned into a Bugs Bunny cartoon. Should have removed a sin here, as this was probably the funniest scene in the movie. Don't hurt me! No more! Of all the songs to have Claw sing while in custody, so that we know he's crazy, you guys went with this one? 
Actually, I thought it was a great choice, seeing how simultaneously cringy and awesome this song is. It powers their city, their tech, their weapons. Claw helpfully exposits this information to Ross, even though he has no incentive to do so except for getting more screen time. Hey, you really can't blame Andy Serkis for milking it there. At least he gets to show his actual face for once. So no reference to Bilbo Baggins and Schmeagle being in the same scene in a Marvel movie? Give me a Kamoyo bit. This will stabilize him for now. Yeah, I'll just stick my who's a what into his whatchamacallit and something something vibranium. He just said, give me a Kamuya bead, this will stabilize him. Jesus, was that so hard to understand? He drew his weapon on me. I know Njobu's done some questionable but why did T'Chaka have to kill him dead? He's already disarmed him, right? This entire movie could have been 80% less conflict if T'Chaka just uses, like, Wakanda neck pinch or something. Njobu is a traitor and just pulled a gun in the presence of a king. Go try that with Donald Trump in the same room and see if you get a neck pinch. Don't touch anything. My brother will return soon. Wow, Everett Ross may be the first movie character in history told not to touch anything that actually doesn't touch anything. Why is that a sin exactly? No, why is that a sin? You can't let your father's mistakes define who you are. Can, and he should, and he does. Because he lets his father's mistakes eventually help define T'Challa himself as a better king. More open to the world and giving aid. His father's mistakes directly led to who he becomes and how he defines himself. Dude, do you not realize that you just said what Nakia is saying? Is it the African accent that's throwing you off? The only reason I don't kill you where you stand is because I know who you are. Is that really the only reason? Like, why is Eric even really in trouble? He's got a Wakandan tattoo, so he's not trespassing. Sure, he's a little disrespectful, but that's hardly worthy of a death sentence. Killmonger took his prisoner, denied him the ability to prosecute one of Wakanda's most wanted fugitives, and attacked him, all in about six minutes of screen time. I found my daddy with panther claws in his chest! Record scratch? The f wouldn't T'Chaka's claws have been part of his suit and retracted back after the stabbing? Why do you eject the f***ing claws and leave them in the dead body? Are you really that dense as to think that's what Eric meant with that sentence? He's clearly referring to the lacerations left by the claws. Or is this just a case of Jeremy Fane's ignorance cliche? Because either way, it's sinful as sh**. I'm exercising my blood right. The challenge for the mantles of King and Black Panther. Okay, but can Eric really do this? There was a whole thing earlier about the challenge being on a specific day when the other tribes declined to challenge before M'Baku. Can any one of those warriors walk in and challenge at any time? Actually, in that scene, the tribal leaders, including Queen Mother, were saying that he couldn't. T'Challa accepted that challenge. Killmonger is at once one of our best comic book movie villains ever, and one of our stupidest. This is just so much dumb it kind of hurts the brain. Why is this dumb exactly? Throwing someone who has just been beaten to within an inch of his life off a waterfall should kill them. It's actually dumb that he doesn't die from this. I am loyal to the throne, no matter who sits upon it. Might be time to reassess the priorities, no? Not even. Killmonger won the fight fair and square, or at least that's what everyone currently believes. He is the king now, and Okoye is doing her fucking job. Burn it all! So thankfully she, I guess, suspected Killmonger might go all burn the witch on the purple flower, and came here to grab one she intends to use to give T'Challa back his panther powers? No. Her plan is to give this herb to Man-Ape, because she believes he's better than the alternative. Remember, she still believes T'Challa is dead. One of our fishermen found him at the edge of the river border. He brought him to me. And I didn't tell anyone. Like, for however long it took for Killmonger to get red-dirted and purple-planted, and then go up and change clothes, and then go into the throne room and order weapons sent to the war dog spots. Yeah, I didn't say to anyone that whole time. Why would he? The Jabari don't care about the politics of Wakanda proper. We let the fear of our discovery stop us from doing what is right. This is the same realization Chris and I had just before starting CinemaSins. Yeah, but he's referring to me regarding sinning CinemaSins. All that challenge is over with. I'm the king now. Get those planes in the air, But everyone can see T'Challa, right? And everyone knows the challenge rules. So why is everyone doing what Killmonger said? The only ones doing what Killmonger says are Wakabi's tribe. In a later scene, you'll see the Dora Milaje stand off with Wakabi's tribe because T'Challa is still alive. Wakabi! Man, kill this clown. This entire movie has been about Killmonger and his killing boner for T'Challa. Jeremy says boner. Man, kill this clown. What a tribe! Bambi! Boy, that escalated quickly. I know Wakabi was pissed at T'Challa for not killing Claw, but his willingness to kill what was his best friend until like a week ago is jarring. Wakabi has accepted Killmonger as his king for not only winning the challenge, but also because he killed Claw. He's just following orders. You want to see us become just like the people you hate so much. Couldn't T'Challa at least mention that he's had a change of heart and wants to help the world now? Isn't that worth a shot before someone gets killed again? I mean, what's the point? Killmonger has already stated that he waited all his life to kill T'Challa. 
There are literally no words that will save this situation at this point. So everything went back to normal after that enormous fight? All those Wakandans that died for the super quick rule of Killmonger are just dead? We all cool now? Well, yeah. <sighs> Bucky. Don't you mean Dusty? I understood that reference. I got one question for you. What are those? What are those?